remote. Um, so when snow covers your solar panel, you dramatically reduce the amount of radiance on the panel, thus decreasing the amount of energy you can produce. Here we can see that on a really good sunny day, all the solar panels in Germany uh, produced a lot of energy, which was, I believe, 20% of the uh, daily demand that day. On their worst day, day with uh, snow-covered panels, they produced only 0.1%, showing the dramatic effect that snow cover has on energy production. Uh, basically, when the snow covers the panel, you're causing shading and you lose power. A study in Michigan showed that on a annually, the loss of energy was 5.2% which is a huge amount, especially for large utility-scale systems. Uh, so basically, the solutions for that currently right now are to manually go out and buy a broom and broom it off yourself, or you can get a very expensive robot that requires its own maintenance and its own power supply. Both of these options are a little unreasonable. Our solution is our easy removal system where this broom will come down and clear the snow off the panel. It is mechanically operated with no electrical parts, so there's no uh, maintenance. And it has a second part, it's a smart reflector here where it will increase the irradiance on the panel. So we're doing two things here. We're removing the snow, which allows you to gain power when you would not be producing any. Secondly, we increase the irradiance, so you increase the overall power production of the solar panel. Our system is cheap, should be selling for under $60, and there's no labor or risk involved with having someone out there removing the snow. So you save money and you save time. Applying our system to the OMA Group Solar Farm, which is located here in Charlton, Massachusetts, we found that they would lose about 75,000 kilowatt hours a year due to snow cover. Secondly, with our reflector, we could increase their production by an estimated 728,000 kilowatt hours per year. This leads to an overall increase, or overall savings of $136,000. As you can see, the amount of energy produced employing our system is significantly greater than without. <coughs> so what's the opportunity? With the SEIA estimates that there's 25 to 50% growth in all solar sectors just this year alone. Looking at the mounting market, they see that the ground mounted and black <coughs> mounted systems will account for almost 50% of the growth uh, up until 2018. And that is going to be a $1.5 billion industry. Our chunk of that could be estimated to be $5 billion a year as we are only focusing on areas uh, that deal with snow cover, that have to deal with snow cover. And this is only in North America. Germany, Italy, and Japan are three of the top TV installation markets, and they all have uh, affected losses due to snow cover, <coughs> which is other areas for further penetration of our device. So basically, you can be green and make more green by using our easy removal system. So the, is it per panel or is it, so if I have a roof full of different panels, is this one unit or a unit for each it, section? It would, it would uh, be a unit per section. I mean, it, it depends. And on a roof mounted, like an uh, angled roof mounted system, our system's not designed for. Right now, it would only be for um, flat roof mounted systems because they'll have the clearance beneath it for our mechanism to operate in ground mounted systems. Um, and it would depend on the setup. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't have like because oftentimes they stack panels up on top of each other. So you would have one device for a certain section. And also, if it is on one row, we can only have these two on each side, and only one uh, long reflector. Mm -hmm. And the way of it is um, acceptable for putting it on a roof. Uh, on a flat, like it, it would be, the, the, we're using, um, the, we plan to use lightweight um, materials. Um, yeah, uh, the instruction uh, standards uh, are designed for solar panels, and our device uh, is just uh, 
where it lies, and it could be attached to the rack system. So it shouldn't have any problems. And also our device is designed for generally for solar farm, which are on the ground. Now, one more question. We're continuous, like, say we got 24 inches of snow, mm -hmm. like we do here, in one storm. Does it continuously go during the snowstorm, or do you just start it up after you get six inches? Well, it, not, it reacts automatically. That's the great thing about it. So once enough snow collects on the reflector, it'll activate the broom. So it's basically weight actuated. But uh, yeah, so once once enough snow collects on the reflector, it'll just act activate the room. So you don't have to do anything. It, it, once it's set up, it takes care of itself. Yeah, it gets heavy and this will go down and it brings down the removal okay. widget. And so it will go right. up again with the springs attached to it. What happens if snow starts to back up to the extent that it pulls it down? And, and what happens to the snow once you pull it off the panel? It would, it would be like you know, it would just be dumped in front of the panel. So that that is still another point to um, address how it will affect. Like if you have a huge winter with a lot of snowfall, right? Because um, it will start to back up. Yeah. So you might run into some uh, maintenance issues um, there, uh, which hasn't been totally flushed out, uh, but we are aware of it, and like uh, we are also yeah. expecting that some why, systems might want to be a little higher. Than, that's why the racking system should go higher. Higher than the solar mass that are installed right now. But right now, this system scrapes it off as the snow is accumulated. Yeah. But it's got to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the end, depending on the snowfall, ice, and other things, it'll tend to back up, which will cover the panel and affect the ability to uh, generate, you know, the solar energy. When, uh, when being installed, I mean, that all has to be taken into account in the design of the installation. So in some regions where you know you're expecting two feet of snow a winter, is that all at once or is that spread out like what would the actual right. amounts? So you can actually plan to 90% uh, of the time be okay with, like, have your system mounted high enough where it won't be affected by um, most situations. Has it been tested in like a lot of snowfall? Um, it has. It has not um, gone through uh, any uh, testing really yet. It's uh, was just developed uh, yeah, it's only last semester. So we want to do uh, testing to make sure that you know we can handle the loads that we believe it can, and that we get the efficiency out of it that we're expecting. So you say sixty dollars for something that size, or something? Because if you look at the at a typical solar farm mm -hmm. that you're looking at. You're talking it could have hundreds of panels. Yeah. Right? So you're looking at six hundred uh, sixty dollars for each for each panel setup that you have? Uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be six dollars for each panel, but it'd be sixty uh, around sixty dollars for each actual uh, mechanism. Okay. Yeah. So uh, no, I mean we, we you would you would make it bigger, this is our demonstration demonstration model. Um, and we don't have the specified like what the average size is, so sixty dollars um, isn't like an exact price point, but based on uh, materials uh, and sizing, that's what we expect we'd be able to sell it for. What is it costing you to make? Um, well, I'm just like this one. What was the, what was the uh, what was what was the price? And part of our part of our estimate goes into um, scalability. Yeah. So also it depends on the materials. We haven't tested different materials yet. So this is. Um, Plastic that we yeah, that was, that was but not even. We want to use aluminum and also different materials. So, as well. what's your next step? So, you said, so, so, what's your, is there something that you're looking to be a business or something as an idea? What, what, uh, what's as, the as, ultimate plan? As a business, um, what we'd like to do is do some testing, um, use a similar setup like this, and actually have the reflector on there and show that we are increasing the efficiency um, and awesome. then also be able to uh, test it. With snowfall. Also, we want to get our patent done, and also we want to run a business for it to have the kilowatt warming. Also, because uh, countries like Canada they don't uh, use solar panels because of this really. What happens on the on the ground mounted ones? 
how does that panel can't go down? Well, the ground mounting was behind us. Oh, behind us. So, yeah. so you're you're talking a specific target of types of panels on the ground. Even. Yeah, and there's ones that would be suitable for the market now, um, but also in developing new installations, is especially where you can plan for it and really make it give you all the extra benefits that we're um, talking about. And just have you thought that your 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 have you put much work into what your what your mechanism is for for clearing the snow off the top? I know you've obviously looked at the four bar linkage here for being able to pull it down with the weight and the springs obviously yeah. to pull it back. But as far as the springs, to make sure you're not violating any of the warranties on the solar panels to, to um, avoid using brushes. Well, uh, I, I didn't um, look at anything specifically like that, but they do already have. Um, rooms and things like that that they have for removing them and we would use something similar to that. Okay. And is it mounted on the roof or on the solar panel? It's mounted to the racking system that holds the solar on panel. On the solar panel. Yeah. Just out of hey. curiosity, uh, with bad weather, uh, why wouldn't it make sense so that the panel itself got heated when the snow occurred so that it melts without that scraping device? I'm really, I was yeah. surprised by the picture where the snow yeah, just sits there. Heating is against the efficiency of solar panels and it can also damage the solar panels itself. And it also uh, decreases the efficiency of the solar panels. Because you need to provide the energy to heat the panel. Well, well you'd have to, you have have to provide energy, energy to heat the panel, obviously, which is a cost. Yeah. But at the end of the day, at least if the panel was heated uh, and snow occurred, it would melt. Mm -hmm. And in the end, uh, uh, just out of curiosity, why wouldn't it make sense to well, heat the panel? Well, that does exist. End up with Cox are out of Germany, which is, uh, actually makes a, a heated yeah. heat panel system. Oh, okay. the, yeah. the higher the temperature of the panel, the less efficient it is. Well, that's true. Um, so, and then also, Obviously, you don't have a heater running all the time, then you're going to need extra sensors to install to be able to tell it when to activate, you know, to right. measure the temperature. So that's increased um, uh, cost and also more areas for things to go wrong. As it, with electronics, you know, you can have a lot of issues. Did you factor in uh, a lot of people when they have these solar panels installed, they also sell back the energy to the mm -hmm. energy companies? Did you consider that factor? Any of your calculations that uh, the loss would be if they weren't able to sell back that energy? When uh, we were discussing the OMA solar farm, mm -hmm. uh, that was exactly what we were looking at. Um, we were saying, um, according to our research, it was about 17 cents a kilowatt hour, and that's where we got the $136,000 from showing that um, we gained the extra um, production from the reflector and then gained the amount lost from snow cover. Thank you.